Justine Blaney takes ballet, gymnastics, and figure skating lessons. But what she really wants to do is play hockey like her brother. And to improve her game, she wants to play with the boys. When she's told it's forbidden by the league, a frustrated little girl pours out her feelings to the city's newspapers. Tryout time is here again, and I'm going to hear the same words again. Yes, you're good enough. We wish we could use you, but you're a girl. I have important reasons to want to play in the boys' hockey league. Girls' hockey offers only two levels of play. The boys have five. I want to play more games at the highest level of competition. Is there an individual or a group that can help me? Help arrives in the form of the new Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Even the boys support her. But when Justine and her family go to court, they lose the first round. Set. And I'm very sorry for, for my team when they have to look for a new defenseman. Justine goes back to playing with the girls. But things are different now. She's made enemies of some of the most powerful figures in women's hockey. They're afraid that girls' teams will begin to crumble if the best players move to boys' teams. Justine is now a pariah. My teammates wouldn't speak to me. I would be on the bench and coaches would talk about me and how I was ruining women's hockey, not realizing I was right beneath them. And then players wouldn't even sit beside me on the bench. We'd go to tournaments and they would all go out bowling and not take me. It was a very difficult time. I was a very sad teenager. She fight for her spot. She fight for the place that she wanted to have as, as a hockey player at the level of hockey that she was able to play. And by doing that, of course, I mean, you, you get out of a lot of people's comfort zone, and most people are afraid to get out of their comfort zone. Her troubles continue at school. Rumors start to circulate. Every one of my friends were seeing me on TV, and all of a sudden they're saying, who do you think you are? You're some kind of hotshot. I was told I was gay, I was sleeping my way to the top, I'd never get married, and I'd never have kids. Despite the hate mail, despite the threats, Justine sticks to her guns. And when her case is heard in the Supreme Court, Canada's top judges rule in her favor. But it will take another year and a half before the Ontario Hockey Association finally caves in. Even then, Justine faces one final hurdle. She wins this case eventually in 87, and she phones the coach, hey, good news, I'm in. He's, no, sorry, we filled the last card last night. And she told the story to her brother, and brother phones the coach, says, well, listen, you're saying that you signed a guy last night, but if there was another card available, would you sign Justine? Oh, of course, if we'd had another card, sure. She says, well, I'm quitting. And so the coach had to put Justine in. In January 1988, three years after starting her legal battle, Justine finally laces up with the boys. But in a teen's life, three years might as well be 30. The tougher, faster boys game has passed her by and Justine soon quits the team. But she will continue to play and to inspire. When little girls today come up to me and say, you know what, I'm playing boys hockey, thanks. That really makes a difference. It helps lighten those years of discomfort.